Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Door. Thanks for tuning into the channel. I'm Kevin O'Donnell. And uh, this week, I'd like to kick off this week's video with uh, uh, a little bit of a tour. If you may recall, if you've seen earlier episodes back in August, I was talking about uh, having the area above my garage converted into a studio where I can do all of my work, work on all my videos, all my photography, my music, my writing, everything in one space and get out of that cramped spare bedroom that I was in downstairs. Well, <clears throat> it's been about four months, but the construction crew finally got here. They're busy guys. They're very, very popular up here in Door County, Creekside Construction. But we are now in the space and uh, they're just getting to the point now where they've done the rough end for the electric putting up the insulation and uh, it won't be long maybe another two or three weeks before I have a space that I can finally occupy uh, I wanted to get a lot of light in here so I had them put in these uh, show you this. these uh, skylights and position them in such a way that I can stand here and look out onto uh, Lake Michigan and see where the water meets the sky, whether I'm sitting or standing. Uh, I wanted originally to have a gable here and have a uh, sliding door so that I can walk out onto a balcony, but that essentially doubled the cost of the project. And uh, yeah, it was very, very expensive to do that. So just working with the existing framing that we had here I just had them put in the skylights and then of course a light here uh, on the gable end uh, lets in plenty of light. I also have them put in lots of recessed ceiling lights that are dimmable and uh, I can control the uh, Kelvin anywhere from 2000 to 5000 Kelvin so I can play with the uh, the color of the light some storage over here they're going to be uh sliding barn doors there also in the corner there and this wall you see the big empty space there that's not for a television that's actually for a zero clearance electric fireplace and that's going to be a gallery wall along there where i can hang all of my photos change them out whenever i want colleen likes having the photos downstairs i'm not real keen on that i don't like looking at up my own stuff uh, kind of get tired of it, but <laughs> uh, in this instance, I think that uh, I'll be able to switch these out whenever I want. So, uh, and then a, they're going to have spotlights on them as well. That's what these outlets are for here, here, and here. Yeah, so that's how it's coming along. It should take, I don't know, another two or three weeks. Here's the old staircase from where I was sitting, and uh talking to you during the introduction to the trip to Washington Island when I had first mentioned that uh, I'm going to uh, make this a studio. This is the heating unit. I'm going to have a separate heating and air conditioning system up here. The rest of the house is geothermal heat. This is going to be an electric heat pump. So I can control that separately from the rest of the house. Stairwell here. So that's a uh, in-progress tour I wanted to give you. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about this week's video because what I thought I would do is uh, I had a lot of questions and comments about from people asking how I went about uh, editing that photo of the Kodan building in Algoma. So I thought I would just walk you through briefly and show you what I did uh, to get that kind of painterly effect uh, on that photo. So. Have a look, maybe you'll pick up a pointer or two. Uh, otherwise, uh, I guess I'll just do see you next time. Okay, I'd like to first talk about the overall balance of this composition. The clouds, for the most part, did their best to obscure the sun, but there was a brief break for about, I don't know, a minute and a half where it poked through before the heavy cloud cover consumed all the direct light. So I was lucky there. Trying to simplify the scene and eliminate as many distractions as I could made for 
really time consuming framing for this image. There were myriad power lines running overhead in every direction and the utility poles I needed to avoid and snowbanks and street traffic. There was even a rooftop satellite dish on the other side of the gable roof of that Kodan building that I needed to strategically dodge from view. All this limited my options, forcing me to make a few compositional compromises. It took me a good 20 minutes or so of tweaking to settle in on this final view. And still, it needs cropping. But I wanted to give myself enough field of view while I was there to allow for some working room in post. I'll activate the crop tool here to show you what I mean. As you can see, I cropped it in quite a bit. I decided to include the cupola on the right at the back of the Kodan building as it brought a better balance overall to the composition, complementing the gable to the left on the granary building, sort of like bookends. I moved my tripod about a foot forward from where I was filming so that this power line on the right didn't intersect with the cupola here. I knew I was going to remove this line in post because, well, from the camera's perspective, it appeared to come from nowhere and it led to nowhere. And by just having sky behind it, it would make it much easier to remove. On the left, I eliminated the utility pole as it was just a jumbled mess of wires and transformers. It was ugly and a huge distraction. I think this was a good decision to remove it, even though the trade-off meant chopping off the front corner of the awning. The wires leading from it to the granary I left in, because they're barely noticeable anyway and not a central area of focus, so yeah, I just left them in. I did leave this one power line in, though, coming down from the top left. It pulls the viewer's eye deeper into the photo, and I don't think it's distracting. I don't know, you may have a different opinion, but I kind of like it there. I made a few universal adjustments. I increased the exposure by about two-thirds of a stop here to brighten it up. And then uh, the highlights texture need reducing. And the clarity slider. Quite a bit, actually. And then by boosting the dehaze filter, this increased the overall contrast and color saturation. And it also simplified the snow, making it look more like, I don't know, marshmallow spread. Lastly, I adjusted the purple hue and then brought down the saturation a bit in the clouds and increased the warm yellow tones of the direct sunlight. I think combined, these attributes give the image that painterly look. Now, as for local adjustments, I'm going to add a radial filter here to the front of the Kodam building just to bring out the detail in the brickwork and use the texture slider and a graduated filter here to lower the exposure in the roadway to obscure the mess of snow and slush and minimize that ugly visual distraction. And uh, activate the spot removal tool here to help smooth out the snow couple of other little things in the sky. That about does it. I mean, yeah, I'm happy with the way it looks now. I hope you found creating this painterly technique useful, and maybe you'll have an opportunity to try it sometime. It's fun. Not something I do often, but I think that it complements this scene and emphasizes the overall look that I was going for. So yeah, until next time. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you down the road.